themselves with these things, and at the same time claim to support Israel, when in, event, when in actuality in Israel we say Allah, we say Yalla, we say uh, these terms, these phrases are understandable to our understanding that they are not in, 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 in any way, shape or form uh, to what they say, to what evangelical Christians say is basically the devil. No, we, we understand what the name Allah means, what it signifies. Take the dictionary of the, of the, Hebrew, of the Hebrew language, I take the dictionary and I actually uh, took the name of God, which is through etymology, is the three letters. Aleph, Lamid, Vehe. Basically, I wrote it down. I know I don't have the uh, I don't have the, the whole thingamajigs on. Uh, you know, you get the idea. So, basically, Aleph, Lamid, Vehe. This in Hebrew means well without the well. See, that's the thing. Without the vowels, because the dots, the the nikud, the dots, or the, the the vowels right here. These are vowels beneath the letters. Indicate how the how the word itself is to be pronounced. So I'm going to block these right now for a second. But I'm going to show you this right here. In my in my understanding, because I'm going to say what it is. This says God. Ela is God in Hebrew. Now with this, with these two right here, with these uh, two uh, vowels, this is the fatah sagol, fatah sagol. This would indicate that this would turn the word God, which without the, which without these vowels it would be God, Ela. Now it would be Olo. Olo. Olo means a curse, an oath, or a covenant. Christian evangelicals love to use this. They like to say, ah, but you see, Allah with these vowels indicates that Allah is a curse. Therefore, the Muslims are worshipping an evil God who was a curse onto humanity. These evangelical Christians, they're nutcases, they're nutbags. And I took it upon myself further to actually uh, see how they got this idea that Allah, the Arabic name of God, is uh, a curse, and more recently is the devil. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. Allah is not the devil. God forbid. May God even forgive me for saying such horrible things. Um, but here's the Hebrew version of the Arabic name Allah when, once it is written in Hebrew. The Arabic name Allah has four consonants because Hebrew is like Arabic, it's almost similar. Same alphabet, same thing, just different script. This is the Arabic name of God. This is how the script is. This is how when it's connected because Arabic is a cursive language. This is the connected form, but however it is four letters. One, two, three, and four. I'm going to have to baby you guys into this. Now this is the name of God, Allah in Arabic, but broken up. So that way each letter is given its position. This is Aleph, this is Lam, this is Lam, this is He. So Allah. Okay. Now this right here, Allah in the Arabic script, this is how it would be become render, rendered in uh, the Hebrew rendition. That way Allah in Hebrew would be Aleph, Lam, Lam, He. Okay. Now, how do we get this, which this right here is, this basically means curse. And the only reason why this means this curse, because of these two vowels. There are seven letters in the Hebrew language that look like this, that have these three consonants. There are seven Hebrew words in the Hebrew language that have these three consonants, and they're both the same. How do, he, how do, Jewish, how do Hebrew speaking Jewish people or non-Jewish people know, how do they differentiate? How do they know when... A curse means a curse, and God means God. Because this right here, without the vowels, this literally means God. This Right now I'm just... Er, God. This says Ela. Ela. Now with the vowels, it means Olo, which means a curse. Look at this right here. I'm actually going to write down the proper Hebrew name of God with the correct pronunciation. This is how we know. This is how we could tell when God is God, and when the letter represents, or when the word is God, or when the word means curse. Okay. There we go. Notice the symbol, notice the vowels. This becomes a, and this dot right here, the holom, it becomes alo. Alo. Olo and alo. Olo. Alo. Can you see the difference? This right here, though they have they have the they have this exact same letters, exact same letters. Everything is rendered the same thing. However, the use of vowels in the Hebrew language allows us to distinct, make distinctions between the, word, between the understandings of what the words mean, what they imply. This may mean curse, but this at the same time may mean God. Okay, that's fine. 
In Arabic, God can also be written without using two L's. So it could actually be Alif, Lam, Vahe. So, Ilah, which is the exact same thing as Allah. Their understanding of how they approach God is exquisitely the same. We do not share the system of belief with Christians that they and us worship the same God. No, we do not. So help me God. But uh, Christian evangelicals do not worship the God of Israel. They do not worship the Islamic, uh, the Islamic perspective of God. Uh, Maimonides, one of our greatest philosophers in Judaism, as, w as well as a religious philosopher of Judaism, has quoted extensively in his beautiful Iger Teman, or the Epistle to Yemen, in which he was uh, basically teaching and giving, uh, basically answering many questions brought forward to him. The Jews of Yemen asked, they asked, what is your position of Muslims? Are they considered idol worshippers? Are they considered paganists? And Maimonides said, the Muslims, the idolatry has been removed from their hearts. A Muslim does not know idolatry, he does not know paganism, he has no form of what, whatsoever, of any grain left in his heart. Therefore it is permitted unto a Jew, when he enters a land where he cannot find a synagogue, that he is, for, he, that he is allowed to pray in a Muslim mosque. He's okay, it's fine, it's okay. Hey, I can go to a Muslim mosque and pray if I have to, if I can't find a, a shul. However, Maimonides says, be careful. If a Jew enters a land where there is no mosque or a synagogue, then he is forbidden to enter a Christian church if there is one. Do not pray in a Christian church. And the reason why is because Christians do not worship the same God we do. They worship a pagan. They, they are idolaters. They are called Avodah Zarah in Hebrew, which means idol worshippers. So exquisitely said, so wonderfully stated. Oh my goodness. And you know, it's, it's quite interesting that... Um, unfortunately, there should be more Jews actually stating the, the facts as it is that you know Muslims and J J J Jews and Muslims we both worship the same God. Uh, no matter what what these crazy evangelical Christians are saying, they're basically nutbags. Whatever they say, it's it's they just try to come up with exceeding ex exceeding lies, redundant lies. These the type of lies that only a child in the kindergarten could easily make up. And emphasize that Arabs. Arab Christians, and you know, this is what's also funny, and I thankfully I remember this, because this is what I really wanted to say, and get, get a load of this Christian evangelics. Evangelics, I should refer to you guys as evangelics. There are actually 20 million Arab Christians in the Middle East today, as well as the United States, as well as around the world. And Arab Christians, and their religious services, and their Sunday services, and Mass, or whatever god frickin' services they have, Arab Christians refer in the Arabic Bible, the Arabic translation of the Bible, they say Allah in reference to God. Now I would like to ask these evangelicals, what say ye of these people who claim to believe in your Jesus? What say ye to them? Now are you going to go chase them and say, oh you're worshipping the set, you're worshipping the devil. The devil is Allah. Just let you know that classical Arabic is very close to classical Hebrew, biblical Hebrew, as well as cl uh, classical Aramaic. They all tend to agree. They all agree in unison that Allah, Hashem, Allah are through etymology, which is the study of the root of words, have come to unanimous agreement that Allah is the perfect Arabic name of God, that it cannot be made into a male, through its perfection, it cannot be made into a, a, a male gender nor a female gender. Rather, it is a neutral personification, not personification, but rather a neutral attribute to God. Such wonderful history.